Hello everyone and welcome to Forge 101, the series where we show you the different aspects of Forge and how to get your maps ready for publishing. In essence, we show you how to set up your maps for each game type, as well as tools and strategies used by the top forgers in the Halo community. Whether you're an experienced forger or a young map maker eager to get started, you're in the right place. Today's show revolves around explaining how to set up your maps for Halo's most popular online game type, Slayer. This category includes both Team Slayer and Free For All, as well as other team games like SWAT and Big Team Battle. Slayer is the simplest game type to create a map for, as it doesn't require very much to work efficiently. However, if you want your map to work to its optimum efficiency and stand out in the community, you're going to want to get a little technical. If you're worried about this being too difficult, don't stress it. Setting up your custom map for Slayer can be a piece of cake once you know what you're doing, and that's what we're here for. Let's go ahead and get started. Let's start by loading up your custom map in Forge and selecting Slayer. Each game type in Halo Reach has a certain number of required objects that are necessary for play. This simply means that you must have these objects on the map to make the game type function correctly. Luckily for Slayer, not much is required at all. The only objects required for Slayer are initial spawn points and respawn points. Initial spawns are the locations where you spawn at the beginning of each game. These are required as your player has to start somewhere, right? Go ahead and place down some initial spawn points. These can be anywhere on your map, but place them where you want your team to spawn, typically together. You can put as many as you like, but I would say that depending on your game type, you should put down between 8 to 12 initial spawns on each side. If your map is built for Team Slayer, then your teams are red and blue. You want your spawn points to correspond to those colors, so make blue team's initial spawn properties blue, and red team's initial spawn properties red. You can do this by highlighting a spawn point, pressing X, and changing the team to blue or red. Now, under respawn points. You should make the property of these match your initial spawns. The only difference is that these points are the locations where a player respawns after dying. Let's say you jump off a cliff. <sighs> you need a place to respawn to get back in the action, right? Of course you do. So make some respawn points in the places you think fit best. If your map is competitive, it's best to have your respawn points near to your team's initial spawns so unfair spawning doesn't occur. Now that you have your initial spawns and respawn points down, your map is fully functional. That means that it's ready for you and your friends to enjoy online. No more work needed. But, if you want to make your map even better and more efficient, try adding these three things. Weapon balance, aesthetic piece, or multiple aesthetic pieces, and a soft kill slash kill barrier. Weapon balance is key to any competitive multiplayer map. This just means that you should have the same amount of the same weapons on each side of the map, making it a balanced game. For example, if you have a sniper rifle on the red side, don't you think it's only fair to have a sniper rifle on the blue side? Try putting a single power weapon in the center of the map so members of both sides rush to gain control. This also means that you need to choose the locations of those power weapons carefully so that one team isn't closer to it than the other. You wouldn't want it to be unfair. Aesthetic pieces are also important. These are in no way required to make Slayer work on your map, but it definitely helps to have good looking structures around or on your map to give it that customized look. Such examples are a tower, some lights, a bridge, or anything else that comes to mind. Finally, the last suggestion that we can offer you is to include kill barriers. These little slices of heaven keep your players safely inside the restricted map area. But what does this mean? These barriers are only here to keep your players safely inside your map. A soft kill barrier is used to give players a 10 second warning that they are outside the arena and should return immediately, or suffer inexplicable pain. A kill barrier means instant suffering. By that, I mean it will kill the player who exits the map instantly and without remorse. After all of this, you're now free to play on your map and share it with your friends in the Halo community. Don't forget to name, edit, and tag your map so everyone can find it. Join us for the next episode where we discuss Capture the Flag and why no one bothers to pick up the dang thing. See you next time.